Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Ellensburg, Washington. Just got done with the dishes. Thought, you know what? I'm just going to enjoy this beautiful evening, late May, and share it with you all. And yes, there's some geology to discuss, as well as just enjoying this scenery. You'll notice a bunch of boulders here, strewn amongst the flowers. And these rocks are part of some glacial till. Poorly sorted rocks, mostly basaltic in nature, many of them with a thick weathering rind part of a glacial till deposit that goes back hundreds of thousands of years. Still not exactly sure the age of the glacial advance to drop these boulders. But there's more than this glacial till here that was mapped by Stephen Porter back in the 1960s. And one of his PhD students was Richard Waite. And Richard Waite was here on assignment in the 1970s and revisited much of this that Porter was looking at a decade earlier. So between Stephen Porter and Richard Waite, we have a decent understanding of what's going on here in this Kittitas Valley from an Ice Age perspective. Not Ice Age floods tonight. Instead, Glacial deposits that were deposited, let's just say, hundreds of thousands of years ago. I think maybe we can do some new dating on this at some point. But from this vantage point here on Hayward Hill, it's one of my favorite local roads. You can see old Whitey is right here parked on the shoulder. And that's Highway 10, the old road between Kaliellum and Ellensburg down low. And just to get you oriented, Looking south, the Yakima River. Interstate 90 goes east and west on the other side of that ridge between Ellensburg, back around the corner, and Seattle, about two hours to the west. But I'm hoping to time this so that the sun can come out and highlight this. But you know what? Maybe this kind of partial lighting is, is the way to go. In addition to our, yeah, I've got a little bit of light, so let me let me focus back on this. I don't even have the right gear. I just, <laughs> I'm literally wearing Birkenstock sandals. This episode of Nick from the Field brought to you by Birkenstock. You've got to love it. I'm barely hobbling around here, but in addition to the glacial till that's hundreds of thousands of years old, You know what I've been having on the brain lately, terraces. And so this is a miniature version of the different terrace levels up in northern Washington that I was looking at a couple weeks ago and that I continue to think about. So I think I will wait for a little bit of improving light and maybe I'll just talk with you as I kind of work my way back down to the road without wiping out. What we have here is a series of advances and retreats of a mountain glacier called the Yakima Valley Glacier. Now, I've talked about this before, most recently at the end of a pep talk that I gave about a month ago. But because I continue to think about this geomorphology with flats of different levels made out of sorted rocks that clearly are the result of running water and ultimately trying to think how much ice there was and where the ice front was and is the water catastrophic bursts of water is the water more gradual uh, do we have tunnel valleys underneath the ice, even with a small alpine glacier like this one? 
Um, you know, all those things are, are I'm still a, pretty much a rookie thinking about the mechanics of that, and I have to rely on others to use modern examples in Iceland and other places around the world that have great deposits, Alaska, et cetera, Antarctica. But all I'm hoping to do here with improving light once I get back down to the gravel road is to simply point out what has been mapped and what has been determined uh, just with kind of relative age dating, not even really specific, precise, absolute age, ages. But the field relations are important to point out. And it took me a while, made it, it took me a while to really figure out what Porter was saying back in the 1970s with these deposits and Richard Waite. So the sun's trying to break through that cloud. I'm also kind of giving you a profile or a side view as we walk here of some of this poorly sorted rock. And you're like, I don't know, is that really glacial till? Aren't those just a bunch of river stones? Well, you're not the Pleistocene mapping expert, and I'm not the Pleistocene mapping expert, and these guys that were in here have all sorts of field observations to determine where the glacial till is. So this is technically part of a moraine, but it's such an old moraine, hundreds of thousands of years ago, that it's difficult to see the morphology of that moraine. A moraine is a ridge of poorly sorted rocks marking the former edge of the ice. Okay, now this I think is where I need to turn the camera off and be patient and wait. Ha! Richard, wait. And wait, I don't know, 20 minutes. Uh, let's get the sun down below this cloud bank and hope that we get some very late day sun in that little window shining up and lighting up these terraces and we'll finish our little episode. Okay, I think it's official. I'm not patient enough to wait another half an hour. So let's let's see if this works for you uh, without optimum light. Or I don't know, maybe this is optimum light. Let's describe what we can. I'm still right up by old Whitey. Okay. Looking west looking up the valley. There's a forested ridge up there called Lookout Mountain. Cleellum, Washington is uh, on the other side. And that forested ridge has glacial till, just like I was showing you. Up there high, glacial advance, ice deposited glacial till, Lookout Mountain. And then, not easy to see, but there are, we're not high enough to see it in other words, but up here at the same elevation as the moraine or the glacial till on the top of Lookout Mountain is a highest flat made out of boulders, sand, gravel. And if I swing the camera then to the south, Oh yeah, this is showing up now. Not the very sky, not the very top, not the forested skyline. That's Menashtash Ridge, but the first bare ridge that's lit up. Can you see roughly that there's a series of flats up there? That's the, on the other side of the mouth of the Tanum or the Tanum. That's a correlative surface. So just like I was talking about with Jerome Lesman up in the Okanagan Valley. We have a highest terrace up at the bare skyline there that matches the elevation of this alpine glacier that first advanced maybe a million years ago. Then coming down, do you see that there's a, there's a flat here? And with my finger, and I'll come in and out of the frame with my finger, because of the focus issues. Can you follow a flat there? Let's keep going with our flat terrace, in other words. 
and that matches the elevation of that area, which is called Thorpe Prairie. And that's the moraine, and that's the glacial till. I'm going to keep going. That matches with what we started with on this episode. So I was standing up here next to the fence line that has glacial till that's, let's pick a number, 600,000 years ago. We don't really know, but that, that's a guess, 600,000 years ago. So that's this glacial till, that's this moraine. And then again, we've got a series of flats that match that elevation. Okay, I don't know if the sun's going to help us or hurt us, but it's trying to get through. Let's keep going down. I'm hoping that you can see the, the most obvious and sexy terrace. I don't even have to point it out, do I? Highway 10's on it. The green triangular patch just across the highway. The Yakima River is in that moat. Then we continue. Look at how perfect that surface is. We lose it again, that's the Yakima River again, and then we go a little further beyond. And now let's try to find this most perfect terrace, which is dated at roughly 130,000 years ago. There, in that gulch fill, that's the same level. Spladam, earlier today I was with my Geology 101 students and we were looking at that terrace across the way. Another one there. By God, there's more of it. So this series of 130,000 year old terraces match perfectly in their elevation. And they are tremendously on display here in the Yakima River Valley, Kittitas Valley. Upper Kittitas Valley, you get the idea. And then finally, we can see there's a lower terrace yet. So here's my point. We have here in this valley a series of terraces that I hope that you can see. And each terrace level matches with a glacial moraine at different portions in this valley between here and Snoqualmie Pass. So you have an elevation of a moraine and a series of planks or a sheet of plywood going away. That's one set. Moraine, plywood, flat. Then if we go back in time, a higher moraine and a higher plywood. A higher moraine and a higher plywood. The top moraine and the top sheet of plywood. So what are the parallels with the Okanagan Valley? Well, there are definitely these flats. Everybody knows that. There are definitely these different flats, these different stair steps. And the trouble is trying to figure out how to match those terraces, number one. And if they truly do match regionally, then what kind of regional story are you wanting? As a novice, I'm attracted to the idea that these flats, all that are similar in elevation, were once continuous. And that we had the entire valley filled with sand, gravel, boulders, and even uh, bigger than boulders. Last point, unlike a Geology 101 lesson, these flat layers get younger as they go down, as opposed to the oldest is at the bottom and the youngest is at the top, like in the Grand Canyon, this is different. So, I don't know, let me, let me finish, uh, you know, we're losing the light. The light isn't what I was hoping for, but maybe, maybe in a weird way, this is the best way to show these terraces when the sun isn't uh, just, thank you, white truck. I'll finish this video by just walking around the corner here with you and uh, 
I know, I suppose if you've been watching each of these videos, it sounds like I'm repeating myself. Uh, and in a way, I am. But I, I keep thinking of these different terrace levels and how to interpret them. And I think the main point of this short video is to remind you and to remind me, I guess, that right here next to where I teach at Central Washington University is a beautiful miniature version of Glacial Advance and Retreat, outwash plains of different ages corresponding to different advances and retreats of the ice. And yes, what we're saying here and what Waite and Porter were saying is that the oldest advance, the first advance of the ice, made the highest moraine and therefore filled the entire valley with outwash. And then the most dramatic part of the story to me is after filling the entire valley with outwash, meaning sand and gravel, bedded sand and gravel, you scoop out or remove damn near all of it and get it out of here to create an opening, to create a valley. And then you wait hundreds of thousands of years for the next glacial advance. And the next advance of the ice is not as far down the valley, is not as high in elevation, and it lays down this next set of flats that were once continuous, made up of glacial outwash. Retreat the ice, scoop out damn near everything, repeat the process to create, as you get older to younger, these different outwash surfaces. The Kittitas Valley of Central Washington, so much on display, I hope it's clear to you why I've been here for 30 years. Thank you, I love you, and good night from Ellensburg, Washington, USA.